Star Dream, Excerpt 1, by Bradley Himmelgarn. Jacob Boristan gazed deeply out of the window. It was positioned on the space station to gaze out over the Rully Poly Nebula. It didn't appear on any Church of NASA postcards, but it was still a splendor. Jacob held his hands behind his back, fumbling with his ornate rings, one of which was allegedly a wizard's focus. But he only had it for the resplendent gem in its silver circular hold. It complemented his sash, a violent crimson horizontal length, scabbed over with various metals. It hung loosely over his obese frame. Jacob's collar was an inch too tight, making his pudgy head red with contained blood. He shifted in place as his face contorted with sourness. His face unscrewed from his imaginary lemon when he heard the door open. A wide smile placed itself on Jacob's face as he turned to face his guest. Greetings, Zorman! Welcome to a hall of noble house Bon King. Jacob's eyes swerved down to his guest, a shriveled, hunched humanoid with a bulbous large head with two spare arms leaning on a cane. Come, Zorman gestured with his free upper arm set. Let us discuss business. But first, some pleasure. Jacob gestured at the table with chairs and a tea set. Zorman rolled his eyes. Jacob easily walked over to his chair and placed himself in it with swift movement. Zorman made his way to his chair while Jacob tapped his fingers rhythmically. Zorman pulled his chair and scowled at its resting position. Using both an upper and a lower arm, Zorman pulled his chair out slowly. The Tetraman finally pulled himself upon the seat. What a pleasure, Zorman gasped. Jacob poured some tea out for himself and added some cream and sugar into it. He then poured a cup out for Zorman, placing it towards him without condiments. Zorman looked at the tea and then eyed Jacob. Took a timid sip while Jacob drank deeply and began to make a new cup for himself. So, tell me, Zormund, what is the context for your ensemble? Zormund breathed out of his mouth while looking away from Jacob. The poncho is a common wear across our people, as we Tetramans have difficulty wearing sleeved shirts. This poncho is decorated with a corporation scarf denoting my position. Hmm. And what of the golden bars on your scarf? Jacob poured himself a third cup and added his cream and sugar. Each one represents a market I have brought under the control of the Tetramand Corporation. Zorman put his tea to the side and brought out a deck of cards. I lost three bars to your expansion into our planetary system. Zorman placed some cards down, forming the foundations of a card house. What is your context? Hmm? For your ensemble. Oh, Jacob put down his fourth cup of tea. My suit is a basic management uniform, save for its custom fabric. Zorman raised his eyebrow. Laser proof. Jacob stated with commercial emphasis. Ah, Zorman took another sip from his first and only cup of tea. Now, my sash is quite the cultural centerpiece, Jacob's chest puffed up. Similar to your scarf and its gold bars, these medals denote the promotions I received. Each one is custom engraved to mirror the success of the project that granted higher and higher accolades for house Bon King. Sounds cost-ineffective. Zorman placed down his seventh set of cards for the card house. Well, perhaps that's enough pleasure. Jacob put the tea set to the side. Let's talk business. 
Zorman placed two more cards down, adding to his card house. What was this business? Jacob's smile broke for a second. Zorman looked up for the construction and spoke as he got two more cards out. I bring a warning from the Tetramand Corporation. You threaten this noble house? Jacob grimaced while grasping his chest. No, we do not threaten this noble house, Zorman continued in his card house. We just want to warn you about a problem your busy eyes didn't seem to notice. Well, Jacob briefly dipped his head to the side. We are listening. Your counterparts in the Azavam party have been over-eager to automate. They pay no one for manufacturing. Your house has finagled ways around inflation by making debt valuable, but with no one to pay it, debt has no value. Your citizens have no value to your society without money. When mistreated for being penniless and homeless, they will have no need for you. Zorman finished his house of playing cards. In this Terran Dominion, there is no center to hold this house together. Zorman flicked the house of cards and it fell over. Ha! The noble house of Ban King is so rich we can endure any crisis. Jacob raved his hands with power and fluidity. House Ban King thanks you for your insight, but we have everything well in hand. Zorman rubbed his temples with his upper set of arms, the others flexing their fingers in spasm. How? Jacob's smile lessened as he balked. I just told you. We have more money than God. No. Zorman's eyes synchronized, slamming their palms out flat onto the table. How did such a reckless, arrogant, short-sighted group dominate the market so extensively we had to formerly ally with your blasted dominion just to get back into the game. Jacob's smile vanished completely, his eyes leveling with Zorman's. I believe you have answered your question. 